Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on other Windows diagnostic utilities. I'm James Messer and I'll be your host through this module when we go through CompTIA exam requirements 220-601 section 3.3, 220-601 section 3.4, and 220-602 section 3.1. It's quite a lot to go through in this module where we're really going to be talking about identifying the locations, purposes, and characteristics of operating system utilities, performing preventive maintenance using these operating system utilities. And we're also going to go down maybe even to the command line level with some of these, learn some of the options and the switches available to be able to run some of these diagnostic utilities. We'll go through these specific Windows utilities. We'll go through Dr. Watson. We'll understand more about what a system restore does. We'll go through our Windows Security Center. We'll look at our task scheduler. And finally, we'll investigate the Windows script host. Let's start with Dr. Watson. Dr. Watson is often used with technical support. This isn't something you have on your screen all the time. It's not always running. You would rarely even see it unless you had called technical support and said, I'm having a problem with this application. And that application team may tell you, run Dr. Watson. Let's get the error again. Because what Dr. Watson is going to do is going to gather a lot of information about what was happening on your system when that error occurred. You start Dr. Watson simply by typing start and run. And Dr. Watson it runs in the background. You hardly even know it's there until a problem occurs. What it's waiting for is that application to crash. And it's going to log everything at that instant. So it's really waiting for a certain thing to happen. It's waiting for that error message to show up. And as soon as it does, it goes into action. It starts gathering information about what was in memory, what, what applications were running at the same time, what other libraries were loaded from the command line, and a lot of information that you simply can't gather by yourself. So this automated process really helps a lot when you're trying to troubleshoot an application problem. Here's my Windows desktop. And if we wanted to see Dr. Watson running, we simply go to our Start menu. We click Run, and we type Dr. Watson and hit Enter. And Dr. Watson just sits there. He's really waiting now for something to happen. As soon as there's a problem, as soon as there's an application crash, Dr. Watson goes into effect, begins saving log files and other information. If you wanted to get a feel for what Dr. Watson can show you, you can run a, a derivative of this called Start Run DRWTSN32. And this brings up the Dr. Watson for Windows that gives you inf more information about where the log files will be stored, where the crash dump information will be saved, and exactly what's being saved in that crash dump. Sometimes technical support will have you go in here and turn on and off different things because they may, may need more or less details about what they're saving into this log file. So these are important to use whenever you're running into a nagging problem and need some help from technical support to help you get through it. The system restore capabilities that are inside your Windows environment can be very helpful because what they're doing is creating frequent restore points. These are points that we're going to allow you to go back in time if you ever have a problem. If you're installing a new application, if you're installing some new drivers, and you want to be sure that you can go back after the installation, kind of a plan B to get you back to where you were. Say something went wrong after you installed the drivers, using System Restore would allow you to go back in time to a configuration that was before you installed those drivers. Now this uh, really is managed in our Windows XP control panel under System. And there's an option there for System Restore. And you can set up exactly how much disk space is going to be used by System Restore. If you need more disk space, you might want to set it lower. If you want to be sure you can, back, can go back in time a longer time frame, you may want to set it higher. It just depends on what you have available in your system. Now this does not guarantee recovery from any viruses or any spyware. And that's because although this is going back in time to a configuration that keeps track and remembers what it was prior to this installation, unfortunately the spyware and viruses are also smart and they'll go back to your restore points and they'll infect every single one of your restore restore points at the exact same time that they are infecting your operating system. So this is not a great idea if you want to recover from a virus or spyware. This is also not going to remove anything. So if you've created some documents, some presentations, you've saved some videos, some movies, and you'd want to be sure when you go back in time that they're still there, don't worry. Your restore system restore is not going to delete any of your documents. It's only going to change the configuration of your operating system. Let's look at the restore point on my system. This is under Start, under our Settings Control Panel. 
And this will be in our system configuration. And it's under an option here called System Restore. There's our tab. And it tells you the System Restore can track and reverse harmful changes to your computer. You can turn it off completely. You really don't want to do that unless there's a really good reason to, because it really doesn't take much disk space. And you can control exactly how much disk space you'd like it to be able to use. And you can see exactly which drives are being monitored for any of these changes. Very simple to have. It works in the background. You almost don't know it's there. And boy, when you need it, it's great to have those capabilities that you can go back to a time when your system was working properly. The Windows Security Center is a central place you can go to look at what's happening with the security components on your system. This is completely integrated into Windows XP. It's right in the control panel. You'll see an icon there for your security center. Inside that is options for your antivirus, a place to look at spyware, a place to look at firewall settings, and automatic updates. So it's a central place you can go to to manage all of this in one fell swoop. Makes it very easy. And even if you've installed third-party modules that might turn off your existing antivirus or spyware that ships inside your Windows XP, you can still usually access those from inside your security center. You want to check with those third party modules to make sure that they integrate with that properly. Let's look at My Security Center. Under Start, under Settings, and the Control Panel, you'll see there's an option here for Security Center. A little shield pops up. And if we double click, it opens up a nice big screen that shows us our Windows Security Center. In my Windows Security Center, I have firewall, firewall, automatic updates, and virus protection running. And not only does it tell us whether that firewall and those components are on or off, so you can see at a glance whether they're working or not, you've also got some nice quick links down here at the bottom. If you wanted to go right to your Windows Firewall settings, you can click Windows Firewall, and it opens up all of your options so that you can make any changes you might need to your firewall settings. A very nice place to go to have everything consolidated in one place. And if you're ever trying to find out, is my personal firewall all on or off? Is my antivirus up to date or not? It's all going to be in your Windows Security Center. Another nice utility that ships inside of Windows is the Task Scheduler. This is found under Start All Programs, Accessories, System Tools, and Schedule Tasks. So this scheduler is something that you as a user might use. So it makes sense that it would be under our Accessories. The Task Scheduler is really useful because it's going to run programs automatically at a predetermined time of day. So we can automate a lot of functionality using this Task Scheduler. If you want to automate things like when an application is updated or changes to an application, you can add them to the task scheduler. Sometimes if there's a file transfer that has to take place every night, it's very nice to have this timed capability. You can say at 3 o'clock every morning, run the automated file transfer. And you'll notice that some people will put their defragmentation functionality, those utilities, also into the task scheduler. So when they're away from their desk at 2 and 3 in the morning and they want to automatically be defragmented, they can automatically run that maybe once a week. And it does it automatically through this task scheduler process. Task Scheduler will find in the Start menu under Programs, Accessories, our System Tools. And inside of our System Tools is our Scheduled Tasks option. The Scheduled Tasks will present to us everything that's got configured on our system to occur at a certain time. I have one in here already for disk cleanup, for instance, that happens at 8 o'clock every day starting at a particular day. It's next going to run at 8 o'clock in the morning. It hasn't run before on the system. If you want to add a scheduled task, very easy. We'll double click the scheduled task wizard and just steps us through a question and answer period where we can decide what would we like to run. Let's say there's a certain program we want to be sure that runs every day. Maybe it's a synchronized program. We'll choose that one. And we'll say we want this synchronized to occur every day. And we'll keep the name synchronized. That sounds good. We'll say that it's going to start at 3 o'clock. But let's make it 3 o'clock in the morning. And I'm going to perform this task every day. And we'll start next opportunity that it gets. Uh, we make sure whenever this starts up, this runs as a separate process. So it requests of us the name and password of the user that this process will run as. So we can put in any type of password information, username and password information for this device. And it's going to log that information, keep it in here, and then now we've got a new task schedule once we click Finish that synchronizes at 3 AM every day. Very simple to use. It's built into your operating system. It makes some of those tasks that you'd like to run automatically very easy to set up and use. Another utility that comes inside of Windows, but one we really don't make enough use of, I think, is something called Windows Script Host or WSH. This runs VB scripts, these Visual Basic scripts from the Windows desktop. It can also run them from the command line. It's a great way to automate the scripting process to perform 
different functions on people's machines. This is something that automatically comes inside of Windows from Windows 98 and later. So the Windows that you're using probably has this capability built into it. This is an extremely flexible scripting language. So if you needed to move files around, if you needed to gather information about what's running on a machine, you needed to perform a number of automated functions. Maybe when someone logs into the network, this is a great way to do it. It really automates a lot of the processes within the Windows operating system. You're really only going to use this if you're a system administrator. If you're somebody who needs to get into the details of a system, perform very detailed functions, and you don't have access to a fancy desktop and move a mouse around, you just wanted it all to happen automatically behind the scenes, WSH is a great thing to use. Of course, CompTIA A plus professionals can certainly make use of this. And you'll find as you do more uh, operating system administration, more server administration, these Windows script hosts and other scripting tools become very useful for you. In review, we've gone through a number of utilities. We looked at Dr. Watson, our system restore capability, the details inside of our Windows Security Center. We then looked at the automated functionality within our task scheduler. And finally, we looked at how Windows Script Host can help us perform a number of options from a scripting level in our operating system. For more free videos, to participate in our message boards, to participate on our wiki and much more, you can visit our website, freeaplus.com.